Hi, everybody. Welcome to Haute Helena. It's only me and Catherine Felig, Felig today because the beautiful Michelle is uh, otherwise occupied, can't be here. So our guest today is an accomplished artist with a firm foundation in both graphics and fine art, and um, Catherine Felig. We're going to call you Kathy. Is that okay? That's fine. I hope I remember <laughs> to do that. Most so people call tell me. <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, I've known you for a long, long time, and I've always mm -hmm. thought of you as Kathy. Yeah. But you sign your paintings, Catherine, right? I just sign them Felig. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, or Catherine, if I'm going to do it. Catherine, I decided to use as my art name. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> well, Kathy, we're going to talk. We're going to try to remember to call you Kathy. And so tell us a bit about where you grew up and your early interest in art. Well, I grew up uh, in two places. I was born here, St. John's Hospital. And then when I was 10 years old, uh, my family moved to St. Louis, Missouri. Oh. And so then I, I was there until I went to college, and then I went to college in Indiana and Wisconsin. And then I came back here. Okay. So how long have you been back in Helena? Oh, since uh, 1968. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've been I've here known most you of my a long life. time. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh -huh. great. So you have a, a history of art training uh, that was like um, arms and legs long. It was, uh, <laughs> you, it's impressive. I mean, you've taken classes in so many things. So what, um, what are the highlights for you? I like to take classes. I think you never, you, you never know it all in art. Absolutely, it's, I it's agree. It's something that you, I just keep taking classes, even if it's with somebody who I know you know, that I do as good a work as they do, I still am interested in their methods since I learn something sometimes. You yeah, know, absolutely. Something different. Yeah. So I just I just like to take classes. And you've taken a lot of them mm -hmm. in so many different media. Yeah. So um, <laughs> just just run run down a few of your of the highlights. What you love the most and what has influenced you the most. Um well, I, uh, I never realized I was an artist until I moved to St. Louis and I had a, a teacher in fifth grade that declared that I was an artist and I became the class artist. And that's the first I ever remember thinking, you know, knowing that I had a special talent. My mother said she knew it from a long time before then, but uh, and I love to draw. I've drawn most of my life and uh, I, I painted, I went to, when I went to college, I didn't have too much art in high school. I went to private high schools and they weren't really concentrated on art at all. So, but when I went to college, I majored in it. I uh, have a liberal arts degree and I majored in art and I got into oil painting then, that was the thing. It was in the 60s and I wanted to, I wanted to draw horses, one of my lifelong loves and they forbade me to, <laughs> to paint horses. <laughs> they were horrified. So I was, um, I had to do abstract expressionism. Oh, and yeah, that's typical of Yeah, it was in the 60s, that's mm -hmm. the way it was. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm a perpetual student, so I read and read and read and just got as much experience as I could and found out that studying abstract expressionism actually was studying the basics of art. Oh, so um, <laughs> the the, uh, the guys that were the abstract expressionists weren't just splashing paint. They were classically trained painters, and they really got into color. And you know, they kind of pulled apart all the different uh, ingredients in composition, and kind of studied that. And so there was a lot to study during that era. So I think I got a good education that way, even though they wouldn't let me draw horses. I drew horses later. <laughs> yes, and you do them beautifully. <laughs> I drew a horse. I, I thought I'd wanted to draw horses, so I drew a horse one time and I got his leg on backwards. <laughs> that is so easy to do with yeah. horses because yes. they do yeah. they just uh -huh. run differently from humans. <laughs> and um, one of my friends bought the painting and, and teased <laughs> me about it forever after. <laughs> So I decided that maybe horses were not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they certainly are yours. There's this beautiful scratchboard piece that you've done with uh, horses. 
Yeah, um, is that something new that you're doing? It is. I picked up Scratchboard a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. Um, uh, Janice uh, Boji, who's in our gallery at the Mountain Sage Gallery, uh, does Scratchboard, and she gave a class in it, so I took it. And I just, I love it. So I've been doing quite a few scratch boards. This is the latest one. It's the biggest one I've, I've done so far. Just beautiful. And horses are a great subject for scratch board. Scratch board yeah, because but of if, their, their hairiness and furriness. Well, and it, it, you need objects that have interesting light patterns. And so any object would work. I've done, I've got a, a, a scratch board, a small scratch board at a sh that's going to a show in Tucson of an, uh, a Native American who's sitting on top of a horse, although you don't see the horse, and he's waving to the crowd, and it just turned out wonderful. Oh, wow. um, and I've done dogs, I have a, a little scratch board dog, and I've, I've got plans for some uh, flowers, some columbines, some really light columbines that I thought are they beautiful. They reflect the light beautifully. Yeah, they're, they're a really interesting shape and I thought that might make a good scratch board. Great. So it's, and it's oh, a great way to that. study uh, design. Look at zooming in on that beautiful horse. Look at his eye. Oh, he's just lovely. And that's all yeah. done on a pure black India ink board. Right, yeah, it's, I buy uh, ampersand boards, so they're actually boards and there's a, a white clay underneath and then they put ink on top of it. So you scratch with any uh, sharp object. I tend to use just X-Acto knives, but uh, yeah. And you scratch. And you scratch away and every mark you make is white, so it's the opposite of what usual drawing is where the marks you make are dark yeah. on a white surface. So. It's a, a wonderful, uh, um, it, it's a wonderful exercise. Oh, I found yeah. I, it's, it it's something that else. you can draw. There's no doubt about that. Oh yeah. It, it proves that you can draw. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it takes a long time. So. And so you brought, this is an oil? No, it's a, an acrylic. Acrylic, okay. I quit doing oil after school, after m my college years. I went on to graduate school. Um, and after that, I just didn't do it. Well, I didn't do art for... Did oil give you headaches? They bothered, it bothered it, me. Uh, later, when I tried to... Uh, I had some um, turpentine, and I was using things. I was using it as an underpainting for my pastels. And in my studio, which doesn't have very good uh, air circulation, it made me kind of sick, and I mm -hmm. thought, nope. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. Yeah. And so I thought, well, why not try acrylic? You and do nicely with acrylic. Acrylic has uh, developed over the years. It's a marvelous medium. And I use a kind of acrylic that's a, uh, it's a slow drying acrylic. So it's, it's very much like oil paint in that way, but it's, you know, water soluble and. Yes, and yeah. cl easy cleanup. And yes, yes. And, and I don't stink. get headaches. <laughs> Yeah, that, and that mm -hmm. is a beautiful piece. Where is that? That's Canyon Ferry Reservoir. It's the, the name of the, of the uh, piece is the south end of Canyon Ferry, down by Townsend, where they have that wildlife area. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and so those are the, the uh, Big Belt Mountains in the background. That's beautiful. And the other piece is? And this is a pastel. Pastels. And... Uh, I say pastel really is my favorite of all the mediums. I think even though I love to draw and scratchboard is fun, but I love pastel, but I haven't been doing too many of them lately because they, it's an elaborate way you have to uh, frame them. Expensive. Oh yeah, because you have to elaborate. keep the glass off of the... Right, you, you know, it's all the spacers the space. and, and uh, I use so museum expensive. glass, which gets really pricey. And sometimes I just get tired of framing them. <laughs> So I, that's when I started uh, acrylic, because I, I want to go back to a brush, using a brush in my hand. And I like how you pulled the paint around onto the ca on the canvas, so it really doesn't need to be framed. No, it doesn't, although some exhibits want framing, want framing. so I'll put it in a, in a floater frame, kind of like uh, this scratch board's in. But uh, that one I haven't. I haven't put in a frame yet, it. but I kind of like it when you see it from the side. It's, yes. it's got it's really a nice because you just it. carry it right around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I kind of do stripes, you know, depending on what color it meets at the edge there. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah. 
So you've lived in Helena most of your life. Most of my life. So what's your favorite thing about living in Helena? It's small and quiet, or smaller <laughs> and quiet. Um, I just like it. I've just been here for so long, and I, I trained and showed horses for a long time here, and um, I just, I'm used to it. And now in my home. in my dotage, I've decided this is the place I want to be. <laughs> yeah, it's home. It's the only place that ever has been home. So but what's really your favorite place, part about the Helena community? What do you love most? <sighs> Art community? Yeah, there's a lot of, of uh, there's a lot of art around, not necessarily visual arts, but a lot of music and yes. uh, drama and those kinds of things. Um, so it's a kind of a good atmosphere. I, I just, I just, I'm comfortable with it. Great. I don't travel very much anymore. Um, and I just, I like Helena being my home. I do too. <laughs> I, really like it. I think it's, it's great to be here. So, um, is there anything else that you'd like to visit with, with our community about, or tell people, or what if we haven't touched on? Um, Your gallery. Oh yeah, Mountain Sage Gallery. It's a great little gallery. It's it a, is. It's a. Uh, it's not a co-op. It's. Um, the, the, but all the artists that are members of the gallery own the gallery, and we, and we participate in, in keeping the gallery going. You know, we put in money for rent and everything else, and it's just a great group of people. And you and participate in keeping it open. Yeah, so and we keep it open. So it, we're there, uh -huh. you know, a couple times a month. You have to go down and man the store, and uh, it's a great group of people, and, and, and the art is is varied, so it's. It's good. It uh, is. It's I a like really it. nice cross section. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had Lyle Schwabauer and um, Svetlana, Svetlana Prouty. Yes. <laughs> who's, I see you're wearing one I'm of her I'm wearing one of her scarves, scarves yes. Yeah, painting on silk. Mm -hmm. And oh, there's m many other artists. Um, my work is in the gallery across the street at One Plus One. Oh, yeah. And there are, I mean, there are so many wonderful artists in Helena that it's just. Um, we could probably have an artist a month for the next uh, 10 <laughs> yes, years forever. and never scratch the surface. <laughs> yeah, you're right about it's that. That's great. Yeah. So uh, what are you working on right now? Um, oh, currently, I'm doing a drawing of my dog. It's just for me. I've, I've been um, drawing the, the halter in, during the winter, every Wednesday night has a figure drawing session well, where they hire a model that? and anyone can come in, pay your ten dollars if you belong to the Holter or fifteen. I used to if do that. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've been doing that for a long time, and so I've been testing uh, drawing uh, different drawing materials, and I've um, I've used uh, charcoal and white pastel on a tinted paper, which I like a oh, lot. That's nice. So I decided that's what I was going to do with, with Scout, my dog. He's got two portraits already, so this is his third. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like people take pictures of their dog. They all, I mean, yeah. yeah. Have a camera. <laughs> yeah. With me, they're kid. hanging on the walls. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm using. I'm doing actually in color instead of just the black and white and gray, uh, and I'm using hard <coughs> pastels to draw, which is just a, a slick paper. It has no tooth in it, so you can't do the usual pastel thing, um, but just very lightly with strokes, and it's really kind of nice. That's what I'm working on now, Great. and then I want to work on um, a uh, acrylic too of flowers. I've gotten onto flowers lately. And that's something I haven't done. You get kind of bored, you know, yeah, <laughs> yes. just doing yeah. the same thing. So Absolutely. I'm always trying different things. So I've been in the flowers. So this one's going to be petunias, if it turns out. You never know. <laughs> and, yeah, isn't it the truth? You never know. <laughs> but um, flowers, that season's coming up. So. Yeah, I've got some flower paintings down at the, at the gallery right now because we put them up for February. And I so saw on. them, they're beautiful. Yeah, and I, I grow a lot of flowers. I'm a gardener that just won't quit. So my, my yard is anything that can be planted with flowers, or I have a little vegetable garden too, it's planted. So it's, it's kind of a full-time job during the summer. This time of year you sort of 
and get, I get kind oh, of excited oh, about yeah, gardening, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And I have thousands of pictures of my flowers. I'm always photographing them. So, yeah. So I'm doing that now Great. for a while. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we probably have about. Well, I think we may be out of time. <laughs> I can't believe the time went so quickly. Yeah. But thank you for being with us. Sure. And Glad where's to be the here. big yellow taxi going next? Uh, uh, you'll find out. We'll tell. <laughs> we'll tell when the time comes. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.